cellular senescence is one of the nine hallmarks of ageing. The prevalence seems to increase with age and may even enhance the ageing process. But how much evidence is there to support this? Why do we need to identify senescent cells? And how can we identify senescent cells? Well, hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where we will touch on all of these questions as we discuss one of my favourite topics, cellular senescence, especially because this article came out recently that has developed a new genetic tool to identify potentially a different flavour of senescent cells. So is their clearance also beneficial? Well, you'll know the answer by the end of this video. So where to begin? Well, a brief intro to cellular senescence, of course, which is a term given to senescent cells. So what are senescent cells? Well, they are a term given to cells that have entered a cell fate whereby they no longer divide and acquire the ability to produce a variety of factors that they then secrete into their surrounding environment. These secretive factors include factors that can modulate the surrounding environment of the cell and help fix any damage that may have caused the cell to become senescent in the first place, as well as inflammatory factors that may recruit immune cells to clear the senescent cells. So this all seems pretty positive. It's a mechanism to stop damaged messed up cells from further replicating and potentially forming tumours, and it may even promote its removal from the body. However, if the senescent cells fail to be cleared and continue secreting these inflammatory factors, it is thought instead that it can have deleterious pro-aging effects. And I found this nice figure from a recent review, the link is in the description, which basically highlights a key principle of senescent cells, which is they have a huge diversity. Firstly, a cell can become induced to senesce for different reasons. Maybe they have some DNA damage, Maybe there are too many reactive oxygen species, or they've replicated too many times. Secondly, the cell types are different. You can have senescent skin cells or a senescent liver cell, and because they're different cell types, they will also slightly differ. And then another region of heterogeneity is in the factors that they secrete. That's not just the composition of what exactly they secrete, but also the abundance, how much of those factors they secrete. And then there's the different diseases that the senescent cells have been linked to. So senescence has been linked with ageing, and the clearance of senescent cells seems to improve health in model organisms such as mice. In these landmark papers, they showed that when you remove the senescent cells using a genetic inducible system, it alleviated some of the symptoms of health. The ones used so far have been using an inducible system which clears cells that have high expression of a protein known as P16. And so you might be thinking, why is she talking about something called P16 now? Well, they were using high expression of P16 as a marker for senescent cells. However, I just told you that senescent cells are very heterogeneous. Is high P16 expression actually marking all of the senescent cells? Or are just a subset of these senescent cells getting cleared? And are these senescent cells getting cleared the same ones as those used by different senolytics? drugs that kill senescent cells, so non-genetic approaches. But this raises an interesting question, and an important question in the field, which is, well, how do we actually identify senescent cells? Well, despite their diversity, a key shared feature across senescent cells is that they have stopped dividing so-called cell cycle arrest. One protein involved in this cell cycle arrest is P16, so the rationale with the previous work was that cells with high expression of P16 are likely to be arrested and therefore also likely to be senescent. However, in senescence, there are two main signalling pathways that are thought to be involved in preventing the cells from dividing. One involves P16, but the other involves P21. So previous markers have often used P16, which actually has a very similar function to P21 as they are both involved in the cell cycle arrest, but they are regulated in different ways. P21 is famously regulated by the world's coolest protein, that is P53. Fun fact, I submitted with my lab leader Masashi a few on P53 in senescence this week, so I'll let you know if and when it gets published. But anyway, P21 is involved in the cell cycle arrest feature of senescence. But compared to P16, as I just said, they're regulated in different ways. 
So the dependency on each of these pathways also seems to vary depending on the mode of induction and the cellular context in terms of senescence. So it's a little bit complicated. But the important question is, well, why P21? Is it going to be a better reporter of senescent cells than P16? As not all high P16 cells are senescent, and not all senescent cells have high levels of P16. So can the same be said of P21? Well, frankly, it hasn't been widely explored. That is, until now. As in this recent Nature Aging paper, the authors have developed a genetic mouse model that basically uses the P21 promoter to control the expression of the protein Cray recombinase. So if P21 is being expressed in that cell, the cells are now going to be expressing this Cray recombinase. If they can stabilise this protein by feeding the mice with tamoxifen, it enables this protein to act on other sites of DNA and activate different reporters. Now, it doesn't really matter if you don't entirely understand what that means, but what you need to understand is that it basically enables the researchers to combine the senescence reporter with other types of reporter mice to further characterise these high-expressing P21 cells. So the first thing they were interested in was trying to see where the senescent cells accumulate. And so they combined their P21 mouse model with a luciferase mouse, such that only luciferase is being expressed in high P21 cells if the mice are treated with tamoxifen. And so luciferase acts as a marker to be able to see where these high P21 cells are. And so, unsurprisingly, they saw an accumulation of P21 high cells with increased DNA damage which makes sense as DNA damage activates P53, which would also activate P21. But I also saw these P21 high cells in mice fed a high fat diet and more signal in older mice, comparing here three month old to 23 month old. So it seems that P21 high cells appear as you age from a high fat diet and from increased DNA damage, assuming that these P21 high cells are indeed senescent cells. But to get a higher resolution vision of the cells, they then used a fluorescent reporter, this time such that the P21 high cells are red under the microscope. As you can hopefully see in these images, in the old mice, there was around 1.5 to 10% of the red cells, and you can see this in visceral fat tissue, brain, intestine, heart, liver, and skeletal muscle tissue. So in previous research papers using high P16 expression to detect senescent cells, they showed that clearance of these senescent cells delayed ageing associated disorders. So the authors of this recent publication were interested in seeing what would happen if you got rid of the P21 high expressing cells. So to do this, they crossed their mouse reporter to a different reporter that meant effectively that when the mice now were given tamoxifen, it killed any of the cells that had high expression of P21. And to see how effective the clearance would be, they performed intermittent clearance, which is in line with Jim Kirkland's hit and run hypothesis, which is the idea that if you're going to clear senescent cells, because they take some time to develop, you may need to only do it every so often. And so here, they treated the old mice with tamoxifen six times over the period of three months. And so remember that this is going to be effectively killing or removing these high P21 expressing cells, which they think are senescent cells. So as you can see here, compared to controls, the mice seem to show improvements in physical function after the three month treatment. For example, they saw improvements in maximal walking speed, grip strength, hanging endurance, and also increases in the daily food intake and daily activity. So the author suggested that this demonstrated that the clearance of these P21 high cells alleviated physical frailty in old mice. So you may be underwhelmed or overwhelmed with these results, or you might just be whelmed depending on your interests, but I think the study provides an interesting insight into a different subpopulation of senescent cells. As I've preached about before, the senescent state is heterogeneous, and that was most evidenced by the fact they saw the accumulation of P21 high cells in different locations to P16 high cells. Moreover, since P21 is regulated by P53, it suggests that the senescent cells with high P21 may also have higher P53 activity. So, okay, maybe that's more of interest to myself but it could definitely help to further understand how P53 is involved in aspects of senescence and or specific tissues. 
But besides my biased interests in P53, this P21 high reporter mouse model can be crossed with different genetic mouse models to further understand regulators of the senescence associated secretory phenotype such that they could reduce the SASP only in senescent cells rather than current senomorphics that would impact not only senescent cells but also the normal cells. So it will help to further underpick exactly what these potential drugs might be doing. And to take some final words from the research paper itself, these mice can be indispensable models for screening new senolytic drugs to kill P21 high cells in vivo and greatly accelerate next generation senolytic drug development and senescence biomarker discovery. So it definitely will be a valuable and powerful model for, for exploring senescence in vivo, which will be helpful for potentially developing human therapeutics. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed another senescence video, a favourite of mine on this channel. Um, thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.